Hello everyone, this is Arm Ready, and you can call me Ratty because I'm ready to check out this unboxing. Today, I'm here to talk about the Gateway GWTC 116-3BK because despite all my searching, I have found no reviews of this device. This laptop is an ultra-slim convertible based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C Complete platform. It has an 11-inch touchscreen display, an octa-core processor up to 2.4 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, USB-C 3.0, USB-A 2.0, webcam, micro SD, and supports 4G LTE. And today I plan to take you through my unboxing and first look. This smells very strong of chemicals. Okay. So there we have it. We have a packet of information. We have a laptop and I'm guessing the charging cable is in here. Let's open this up. And this looks like the pin. We have a stylus that goes with the laptop. Comes with a battery. USB-C to USB-C charging cable. And we still more. Yes, that's it. Oh, God. Have a nice little power brick reminiscent of the iPad, but with USB-C. See, this looks like it's rated for five volt, three amp, or 15 watts, as well as a 27 watts, 30 watts. Got several supported power configurations for this. Okay. Well, Take these off, and we'll get a good look at the actual laptop itself. Open this up. I'm really excited about this. I haven't seen a whole lot of Windows laptops with the new Snapdragon processor. I've seen the uh, Samsung Go Book or Galaxy Go. But looks like we have a power button, a Wi-Fi indicator. Uh, and a camera that is mobile. And on this side we have a rubberized protection for the USB-C charging port, the HDMI, micro SD, the headphone jack, and the SIM card tray. And then on the other side we have a USB type A and an Ethernet port, which is something you don't see a whole lot of on some of these smaller laptops. Okay. Let's open this up. Look a little bit at the inside. So this camera does indeed flip all the way around, so you can use it on either side. Got a spot right here for the pin. Not entirely clear on how to open this yet, but looks like it does just click down right in there. Okay, we have keyboard with a little blue inlay, which is pretty neat to see. 
power button is there and a nice little trackpad that's a little grippy and then there are some chunky bezels on here but then again this laptop is you know a little ruggedized it's water resistant and shockproof Okay, I'm going to get this thing charged up and set up, and I'll be back to you with my experience on the inside of this laptop. Okay, opening this laptop up, I can already tell it's definitely not a one finger open, but you don't find that a lot on these tiny little laptops. Let's wake it up, and one of the first things I think about when I get to the desktop is that Doja Cat song, Moo. And the next thing that I notice is that this laptop seems to have a certain amount of bloatware. I already see Forges of Empires. There's Kodomi. There's Simple Solitaire. If I open this start menu up, there's also Elvenar. Got the full office suite. That's not surprising. Other than that, I don't see a whole lot, I guess. So we'll go over to settings. I want to take a look at this system. And We're running the Snapdragon 7C at 2.4 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, as expected, and the manufacturer's GPU company, which when I first saw the uh, ad on Walmart, I thought that was just generic terminology, but no, it, it really is GPU company. We'll open up File Explorer. And of the 64 gigs of hard drive, you only get 20 free. So that 64 gigs does not go far. You'll definitely want to get like a micro SD card and map it so that you'll be able to use that space as well. Okay. Okay. Next item I want to look at is do a little benchmark and we're going to try out Big Buck Bunny. First we'll try at 4K, see how that goes. I don't expect it to go too well on a Snapdragon trip, but then we'll check out 1080p. And let's turn on some stats for nerds. And so far I have zero drop frames. Initial load in, it looks like it's in 480p. Let's just bump that up. I'm gonna go all the way to 4K. And wow, no drop frames. Well, now we do. We got a few drop frames here and there. Seems like it stopped at about 30. And this might be just. Very high resolution for this screen. We're up to 43 now that I've full screened. But honestly, it looks great and it's doing fantastic at 4K. And then by the magic of video editing, we have skipped to the end and we see we've only dropped about 178 frames over the 36,000 that we had in this entire 10 minute clip. And that was streamed at 4K, which was honestly not bad. I didn't notice any kind of stuttering or anything. Um, that said, 
the viewport on this screen is only 1366 by 768. Okay, the next test I'd like to run is Passmark. I'm going to let this go through, and with Movie Magic, we'll see the results from the end. Okay, so it doesn't look like you're going to be playing Cyberpunk 2077 with this laptop, but that's not what this laptop is made for. This laptop will be good for people like students doing e-learning or maybe somebody that's working on the road, uh, has to access email, uh, things on the web, stuff like that. It scored pretty low in a lot of things. It looks like the memory is in the third percentile, which means this laptop is not going to be winning any races anytime soon. Taking a look at the camera, you'll see that the quality is adequate but far from HD with that one megapixel camera. It's also a little bit zoomed in. I'm sitting at a fairly reasonable distance for sitting at a laptop. Another thing is you'll notice that there is a little bit of a bias towards the shade of blue. It is not a very warm looking camera. The auto quality is not that great either, but then again, we're also looking at a budget laptop. This audio was recorded on the laptop. I played around with this laptop a bit off screen to see how well it performed for regular usage, and it's not bad. Windows on ARM definitely has some drawbacks, but it benefits from excellent battery life. The keyboard was comfortable for me, but it did feel a bit like a toy compared to my desktop. The touchpad was a little stiff for my taste, and the speakers don't provide great audio quality, but the video playback does run smoothly and the screen looks good and has great viewing angles. The stylus performs reasonably, but there doesn't appear to be any form of palm rejection for the screen. I did determine the bloatware were mostly just links, with Kidomi being the only real non-Microsoft bloat. I ran into some issues with the LTE modem, there was no documentation on it, and you have to hunt down the IMEI. While it's supposed to support all carriers, I could only get the T-Mobile ones to recognize the IMEI, and neither Gateway nor the carrier I reached out to were willing to help with that. This laptop does come in the sub $300 range, so that should be considered. It is a budget laptop with budget components, and the operating system takes up two-thirds of the hard drive. I wish Gateway would support the LTE a little bit better, but other than that, it has been a fun laptop to play on, and I'm really looking forward to the future of Windows on ARM. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you want to see me cover another ARM device, please drop a comment. Thank you for watching, and till next time, stay ready!